Hi there and welcome to Hearthside. My name is Michelle and I've been slowly going through all my old posts and trying to make an audio copy basically through these videos to help with accessibility. Um, I took a short hiatus as I have just recently moved so just trying to get back where I left off and the next post is called Calling the Rain. Um, so to give you an idea, last year was a drought year in our region and it has been drought for the last few years but it was particularly bad last year and I was looking at um, a folk practice that is Slavic to call the rain basically. Um, so I tried this ritual on my own. I I'm not sure if it really was successful or not, um, but that's because I didn't follow it exactly. It says that it should be a group of women who would do this ritual, and it was just myself in this case. Um, we did have rain shortly after that, but not enough to relieve the drought, and there's like a couple different ways that it was suggesting to do the ritual and I sort of just followed one of them so um, yeah my opinion is it might have worked better with a group of people and I know a lot of people say that about ritual that it's more effective in groups anyways so um, yeah uh, so I was just noticing in our own weather last year like there was no water even under the dock where I like to go walking along the river um, and it was just sort of a real frustration in the back of my mind because we were having all this talk about COVID and not very much in the way of talking about what was going on with the water and how that would affect agriculture in our region or what problems there might be with um, the food and supply chain which we're now starting to see the results of for a number of reasons including probably the bad growing season last year but also other world events that have occurred since then um, I was suggesting a book that I had been reading at the time called The City is a Labyrinth, The Walking Guide for Urban Animus, and I still recommend that book if you are living in this city and you want to get more in touch with nature as a heathen. I think it's a super useful book. Um... It, I was surprised because like it's pocket sized and I was like as soon as I saw how small it was I'm like I don't know if this is going to be any good but then I read it and yeah I, I definitely recommend that book um, and then I stumbled across this ritual well one of my friends actually I think sent it to me and it's basically calling on a spirit called German who is associated with rain and hail and the idea is basically that you make a doll to represent German um, and usually out of rags or um, plants and fruit and things and then you take them to the bank of the river and you either float it away in a mini coffin or you bury it there on the river bank. Um, if you want to actually like look closely at this ritual, it will be in my links. Um, I didn't go into a lot of detail about it because I'm not particularly comfortable with sharing ritual, which was why I didn't include images of what I actually did when I was talking about it. Um, yeah, so I was talking about that ritual and then I was sort of relating it to things that I had found 
um, about similar rituals involving Freyr um, and basically rituals for, for fertility um, that could be associated with bringing rain in a drought as well. So I looked at that, and then I also looked a little bit at similar uh, Greek traditions, and um, also talking about the St. Eric's Day processions in Sweden, um, and the idea of like taking a cart around the landscape with the um, idol of St. Eric, basically, which... I believe is probably, um, it was originally Freyr, and with the Christianization of that region, it became Saint Eric. Um, so yeah, I think what I was saying for a conclusion on this one, um, in order to call the rain during a drought, a sacrifice must be made, um, and the elements that seem to be important for this ritual include the element of water, either having a doll or an effigy, um, also there seems to be a lot of phallic imagery, and some sort of symbolic death and rebirth elements. So like if you're taking away from this and you want to build your own ritual, just those are some components that you might want to include. Um, it doesn't seem to matter what the effigy is made of, like this one it was suggesting rags or dried fruit, but also clay, um, whatever you feel comfortable with. And the main idea is that it represents the vegetation and fertility. Um, and somehow includes the element of water since it's rain that you're looking for. Um, we've been very lucky this year in this region and we've had quite a bit of rain to make up for the past few years, um, which I will talk about more in some of my other blog posts and videos as I think it has to do a lot with um, yearly cycles and that there are drought years and then there are years where there's lots of rain and that's all part of the natural cycle that's larger than the cycle of the year. Alright, until next time. See you then.